everyone. Welcome to another Linfield Coaches Catch at Joe Stewart out here with head men's soccer coach Andy Duvall on a sunshiny day here at the Linfield Soccer and Lacrosse Facility, getting ready for some conference action this weekend. Uh, one in Portland, one in McMinnville. But coach, about three weeks into the season, how you feeling? Man, is it only three weeks? <laughs> <laughs> Feels longer. Feels yeah, yeah, it definitely does. Um, yeah, good. I mean, we're you have the stats. We're o four and two. Honestly, I feel like a a two two and two record right now really is where we should be. We've had a couple of games slip away from us that uh, just in terms of game management and guys knowing how to play with a lead uh, would would have taken care of it. But our guys are so unfamiliar with playing with a lead that we're learning how to do that. And so um, I think you know we're we're in still a very optimistic place given uh, the fact that we don't have a win on in our first six games. And our guys know what it is that they've got to continue to try and do in order to turn things around. So I think, you know, we're, we're sitting in a good spot. Yeah, and, and you know, after the non-conference start, I mean, no easy task to have to start conference play at the defending champions, <clears throat> Willamette, and then, of course, have to play at your cross-county rival in what's always a, a chippy game uh, to start the season. But that 0-3 loss to Willamette, uh, you know, you're only down 1-0 for almost that entire match. Gave up the early goal, but from there, almost a clean 70 minutes out of the team. Uh, just kind of what was the synopsis? What happened in that last 20 minutes or so that uh, kind of let Willamette get away with uh, get away with the game there? Yeah, I think you know our guys battling. So we've got a lot of upperclassmen that have spent two and three years here, and they've spent two and three years recognizing that where the program was and what they have been tasked with with trying to pull the program out of a deep hole and having multiple losing seasons for several years is, is a big task and it weighs heavy on somebody you know that kind of job weighs heavy on a player weighs heavy on anybody that's involved in what it is we're doing right now and so they knew going into that game against Willamette that Willamette was going to be a good side but that they've made significant progress and are able to try and play with pretty much anybody in the conference now but confidence plays a big role when you step into those matches. And Willamette's still riding the wave of being a good side for the last, I don't know, seven, eight, nine years and constantly being in the top two or three in the conference and having won the conference last year. So even though people were looking at Willamette and saying, oh, well, they were 0-4 going into that game having won the conference last year, well, they played a good slate of pre-conference opponents. It was a very good schedule that they played. Two teams in Texas that are tournament teams and two teams out of California, or one team out of California, one team out of Atlanta, Georgia, that could also both be NCAA tournament teams. So Willamette being in the position that they were in at 0-4, they were hungry for a win, we were hungry for a win, and honestly, they probably had a little bit more confidence going into the game than we did, and our guys knew that. They knew they were going to have to play a very gritty match, which, you know, if you look at, stat sheets and score lines over the last three years um, we've never been in a position against Willamette down one nil going into the 70th minute and having almost an equal amount of shots the game was completely back and forth I mean nobody had nobody had dominated that game up until that 70th minute and both teams felt like it could go either way and I think our guys just broke we broke and that was that was what gave Willamette kind of the the opportunity to get a couple of goals in that last 15 17 minutes whatever it was and our guys were really disappointed that they didn't make good on the chances that they had um, Sid I think had a chance somewhere around the 60th minute one-on-one -on -one with the keeper and put it wide of the goal post by about two inches Cam had a great shot inside the penalty area Patty was one-on-one -on -one with the keeper that I mean Pierre Luca the goalkeeper for Willamette made a great save on tipping it over the crossbar so they, the chances were there to equalize the game and take the momentum, and we didn't take our chances. What were some of the things you liked through that first <clears throat> 70 minutes technically that maybe the team wasn't able to bring against Willamette in the performances last year? Oh, I love the fact that we bounced back after making a mistake in the first 70 seconds. I mean, in, the, in that first 70 seconds, it was just such a terrible way to concede a goal. I mean, it was just based on a long diagonal where we knew we couldn't allow Willamette to play the long diagonal, particularly in our half from their player that plays the holding mid spot. And we weren't marking up the player in the wing properly. We didn't get our defense set. We had a poor clearance and the guy kicked it and it bounced off of one of our players and goes over our goalkeepers. Just like, so you make three mistakes and then it deflects off of one of your own players and goes into your own goal. It's like, all right, so let, we have to swallow that and then play through it, which our guys did. We didn't give Willamette very many chances past that up until the last 20 minutes of the game, 
and I was really excited about how gritty the guys played and then how creative they were in trying to take advantage of what, what, what Willamette gave to us going for the rest of that 60 minutes, 65 minutes after that. So, um, you know, again, if we had put one away and gotten that game at 1-1, I think there was definitely some momentum there for us to take and, and potentially get a draw or a win out of it. It's not how it happened. And like I said, Willamette's still kind of, they're riding that wave of having won the conference last year. So their confidence was in a better position than ours for the last 20 minutes of that game. Sure. Uh, shifting gears to Sunday's match mm -hmm. in Newburgh. So the 1-1 draw with George Fox, scoreless through the first half. Yeah. Sid gets us on the board in the 52nd, but then giving up the goal in the 80th. Mm -hmm. uh, so kind of talk about what, what again, kind of what happened in with Willamette too. Mm -hmm. Late in that match, those final 20 minutes, what has changed uh, besides the, through the first two-thirds of the match or so? Yeah, it's the same thing that's happened with each of our games this year. It was a, a lapse in concentration. Um, so if you look at all six of our matches so far, uh, basically we've had a lead in three matches and we've conceded the lead in all three of those matches. And each one of them was a lapse in concentration. So scouting report against George Fox, they're, they're good on the counterattack. All right, so they, they, they have a very well-organized defensive structure, and we were, we were very good in possession from our back third to the midfield third until we got about 30 yards from goal. And we just weren't brave enough once we got into the final 30 yards, and that's pretty consistent with where we're at right now. We have some attacking players that don't take opportunities when they're given those chances, and it's, just, it's a matter of bravery and confidence when you get up there. It's not technical ability. It's not you know how smart you are as a footballer. It's do I have the responsibility level right now to to take this moment on and say I'm going to put the team on my back and try and get this goal and we don't have anybody on the team that's ready to do that just yet. George Fox does is number 13 and he did it the day before against Pacific same exact scenario it was well not same scenario but close I mean it was 0-0 and uh, Pacific turned over the ball in a bad spot it was one pass to number 13 Eugene he takes a couple of touches and buries it and George Fox wins 1-0 even though Pacific for large portions of the game outplayed George Fox so our guys knew going into the game, they had the scouting report. It's like, when 13's on the field, don't turn the ball over cheaply in the midfield because they'll look to get it to him and he'll take a touch and hit it. Sure enough, we turn the ball over, 81st minute, we have a 1-0 lead, bad decision by a player to dribble around several times in the middle of the park, bad turnover, he gets on the ball and hits it from 35 yards. Pretty routine save based on what our freshman goalkeeper in the game, Colby, would say. Like, I mean, there's no reason why he shouldn't come up with it. It hit him in the hands, and it goes through his hands and into the goal. But, I mean, that's what's happened to these guys. We're being punished for not getting the little details right right now. Same kind of thing happened to us at Pomona Pitzer. We had a draw down there after playing in a really rough game against University of Laverne the day before. We're 2-2 with Pomona Pitzer. They didn't play the day before, so they're a lot fresher. And we make a defensive error, allow a ball into a wide spot, and the kid crosses it. It hits our left back, RJ, in the butt, and the referee calls a penalty and says it was a handball. So it's just like these things happen when you are right on the precipice of making big changes but can't keep your concentration through 90 minutes. And so for us, that was a big part of the George Fox game was that we had the run of play all the way through the first half. We had a lead going into that 81st minute. It was just, can you get all the pieces right based on the scouting report, based on all the details of playing with a lead and one costly turnover in the midfield to a player that had done the same thing the day before is all George Fox needed in order to equalize the game. And so for us, it's that ability to say, do we know how to take on a match with a lead, with a draw, not make the mistakes that are going to put us in a bad spot and finish out the game? And up to this point through six matches, we haven't been able to do it, even though we've had the lead in three matches. Sure. You mentioned Colby Reese, the goalkeeper. Mm -hmm. You've gone through three goalkeepers <clears throat> this season, starting two. Colby has started the last two, and mm -hmm. obviously was pretty solid for most of that Willamette match, and then again mm -hmm. for most of that George Fox match. Uh, but where are you with the keepers right now? Yeah, I mean, Colby and Dylan are out in front ahead of Maddie and Christian, and I don't think anybody's surprised by that. Um, Dylan had uh, an abdominal injury that's kept him out for the last couple of games, uh, but Colby stepped in and did a great job against Willamette and then uh, honestly didn't really have much to do against George Fox until the one routine save, and, and just, again, that's a lapse in concentration by a freshman 18-year-old who's, you know, playing with a lead, and he's like, man, okay, we're going to get our first win, and then it, it just slips him you know so um as far as goalkeepers go I, I don't think i can say it's uh, either dylan or colby one ahead of the other right now they're in a good battle and i'm happy to see them continue to compete against each other
Shifting gears to this weekend, you've got the two dichotomies of the Northwest Conference right now. You're playing first a year program, Lewis and Clark, first year in the conference back since 1991, up in Portland on Saturday, and then hosting PLU, always tough, here in McMinnville on Sunday. But talking about Lewis and Clark, uh, where does the team need to execute to come away with their first win of the season? Yeah, I mean, they just have to be braver. They have to be braver all around, and it comes down to our attacking players. You know, I mean, our, our guys that play in those striker, winger, attacking midfielder positions, they've got to know that the responsibility falls upon them in goal-scoring positions to take the team on their back and put the ball in the back of the net. And so that's what's been missing from those guys is that they haven't really adopted that mentality fully yet and been able to say, I'm going to be the guy that gets the job done for us today. And at right, it's new for them. It's new for those guys. Again, we've spent a long time trying to build up to this moment where we're going to get the ball in that position regularly. And so now, hardest thing in the game of soccer to do is to put the ball in the back of the net, and we're asking guys to step up and do it. Against Lewis and Clark, it'll be no different. They need to, our guys specifically, need to be confident in those moments and say, we're going to put the ball in the back of the net as often as we can because we know we're going to get the ball in goal scoring positions. So against Lewis and Clark, we've got to figure out who that guy is, and then the next next day against PLU, uh, yeah, it'll be a really tough test. I mean, they're flying right now. They had a couple great results over this last weekend. John's always done a really good job at keeping that group rotating different players through and, and having a lot of success, particularly in the, ta in the attack. Craig Johnson is their guy right now. They've got a couple of guys that can back Craig up in goal scoring, but Man, he's just, he's quick, he's strong, he's decisive, he's intelligent, he knows how to put the ball in the back of the net, and he loves one-on-one -on -one battles, and he's good at them. And so we're looking forward to the Lewis and Clark test because regardless of what their record is, they're still a group of college kids that are out there to compete. We're looking forward to trying to push ourselves further and get a win against a team that we know will fight. And then PLU, it's going to be it's going to be a really tough challenge for us because PLU's flying and we're still trying to find our footing and find our confidence. But it's a college game. Anybody can win on any given day. And so we're looking forward to both of these matches. Once again, that's the Wildcats up in Portland on Saturday at Lewis and Clark and then hosting the Lutes of Pacific Lutheran University right here in McMinnville on Sunday. Both of those matches are going to be starting at 2.30 and we'll, of course, have live coverage of Sunday's home match right here on the Linfield Sports Network. Coach, thanks for the time. Good luck this weekend. Thanks, Joe.